Welcome to Engineering with Rosie. Today's video is going to be about wave energy and so I've brought my camera with me into the surf. Surfing is something that I really love to do, love to take the energy provided by nature and turn it into a really fun activity. And of course you can also use this same power to generate electricity. or anybody who's ever been dumped by a wave in the ocean knows all too well the like massive amount of power that's, that is present in the ocean. So it seems like such a great opportunity to add to our sources of renewable generation um, to be able to make more green electricity. And I feel like we've been hearing about wave energy projects for decades now, but we still haven't really seen it gone mainstream in the same way that wind and solar have over that same period. And I wanted to investigate a bit more about um, what are the engineering reasons for this, uh, what are the technology challenges that have proved so difficult to solve that um, is the reason for why we haven't yet begun to harvest a large amount of the, the power available from waves for renewable energy um, <laughs> generation. What the... <laughs> And also, I'm interested, is, are they on the brink? Is, are these problems about to be solved? Are we going to see a massive increase in wave energy anytime soon? Will this be a big part of our transition to uh, a renewable green future? Come with me while I find out, and I'll probably catch a few waves along the way, but I hope I will anyway. <laughs> So every wave starts off as a ripple. You can see the water surface today, it's a, a little bit stirred up. There's not a lot of wind, but just the light wind, the turbulent air over the top of the water stirs up little ripples. And then when um, wind pushes on one of these raised ripples, it can build into a bigger ripple. And then uh, over time, if the wind is pushing in the same direction, it will build bigger and bigger until eventually it becomes a wave. And the cool thing about ocean waves, like any other kind of wave, the water itself isn't traveling in the direction of the wave. It's just energy traveling through the water. So it's like the same thing as my voice is energy traveling through the air to the camera, not actual air particles traveling from my throat into the camera. That's really great for surfing because it means that you can have quite big waves on a, a day like today when there's not much wind around. And that's really, really nice conditions to surf but it makes it a little bit challenging for wave energy engineers because there isn't a lot of water moving in the direction of the wave means you can't use that flow to directly turn a turbine the same way that hydroelectricity is generated so they have to come up with an indirect way to to use this to use this motion to generate electricity there's a few ways that they can do that and actually like a ton like 10, 50, 100, I don't know how many, but there's so many different wave technologies out there. So the waves here today actually were formed probably thousands of kilometers away and the, the motion of the water, it's not in the direction of the wave. Each water particle actually travels in a, a rotational motion. And wave energy engineers are usually looking at three different components from that to try and extract energy. There's an up-down motion called uh, heaving. Uh, and you can see this when the waves pass, unless the surf is actually catching a wave, you're just gonna bob up and down with the, the wave in, in the same position, just like this one passing now. <laughs> There's also a forward back motion called surging and then a rotational motion called pitching. So wave energy engineers are trying to use one or more of these three types of motion to generate electricity. So that's not as easy as 
um, in hydroelectricity where the water just directly falls on a turbine and then pushes it around which turns a generator. So wave energy can't really directly turn a generator so wave energy engineers have to come up with a different way to generate electricity. Uh, they can use one of those three motions uh, to drive a pump which will compress a fluid like hydraulic fluid or air and then they use that compressed fluid to drive a turbine around and that's connected to a generator which generates electricity. That's one aspect of wave energy that makes uh, wave energy engineers jobs harder that they have to translate one of these um, linear or rotational that they have to translate the, the heaving or the surging or the pitching into a way to generate electricity. So usually they'll end up having to add some extra components which adds complexity and cost and can decrease reliability. A lot of the wave energy companies that have come and gone have had problems with reliability, even for just like really simple components like an off-the-shelf cable that failed or bearings that failed. But with a small company, they don't have a lot of uh, cash behind them to recover from, from those sorts of things. And then they also struggle because to repair these systems, you need to get into the ocean to, the, to repair them. Then of course, probably the most obvious challenge that wave energy engineers face is trying to get these complicated devices to last a long time in the ocean. The ocean is such a hostile environment. There's salt water, which can cause corrosion. There's seaweed that clogs things up. Animals might build their homes in unfortunate places. And of course, installation and maintenance mean you've got to get people out to the, the site and then probably get underwater to repair components so that adds a, a lot of cost it's not all difficulties there's a lot of opportunities too and that's why there's still a lot of companies that are, are sure that they're going to get their technology to work and become an economic way to generate renewable energy in the future there is uh, the you know most of the world is covered in ocean and there's waves all through that it's um it's a variable source but it's not nearly as variable as you know solar where it's dark every night and um, often there's clouds it's also not as variable as wind so you can reduce variability in the system if you add in wave energy into your mix That pretty much exhausts everything that I know about wave energy and I, I still don't feel like I really figured out the answer to why wave energy hasn't taken off yet. Yeah okay so there's a, a linear motion that needs to be translated to a rotational motion but that hasn't stopped piston engines from being the, the main way to power a car for the last hundred years. Um, wave energy devices are more complicated than wind or hydro or other ways where you can directly turn a turbine. But you know, a, a jet engine is really complicated, but it doesn't mean that people have been flying around in hot air balloons, which are a lot more simple. So neither of these reasons really, really gives a, a good enough explanation for why wave energy hasn't taken off yet. And it definitely doesn't prove that it's never going to. What I'm gonna do next is talk to some experts in the industry and find out what are the technical challenges that they have uh, solved already in the past, what are the big ones left to solve, and uh, whether they think that wave energy is going to become mainstream in the near future. So keep an eye out for future videos where I'll be looking into specific wave energy types with experts from the field. Keep a look out for those videos in the future. And in the meantime, please like and subscribe. And if there's any topics you didn't understand, then make sure you leave a comment for me and I will re reply to those. And I also love it when people leave suggestions for new video ideas. So please leave those in the comments too. And I'll see you next time.